Joining me now is broadcaster and 3AW football com commentator Shane McGuinness. Hi, Shane. Hey, How Richard, are you? Nice to be with you. Now, let's start off with the Olympics. I know you're headed there, so you, you've got... <laughs> well, I'm interested if you would go, if it's on. Do you have any reservations about coronavirus? Because there are now uh, discussions about should they delay them, mm. should they shift them. The organising committee are saying, no, no, everything's fine, but everything isn't fine. You can't shift them and you can't delay them. The, the sports calendar around the world is just too packed out to move the Olympics, uh, an event of this magnitude that takes seven years to plan for. So forget about moving them, forget about postponing them. If the Olympics were... Why can't you move them? Why couldn't you say, OK, London's ready to go, or Australia's ready to go? We're not ready to go. We, we don't have thousands of volunteers ready. We don't have the infra infrastructure ready to go. This is, this is, this is an event that takes seven years, years to plan. Go back to 2000 and organ, organ all the arrangements, that all that, all the ticketing, and to say, to say, oh, we've got the facility, the, MC, the MCG. But wouldn't it they're not, they're not having anything? Or because, if, or because if you're saying you can't pay it, pay it and put it on, say, months time's time, then uh, uh, you're going to miss game, games and uh, and just and just overnight as all its all its schools to shut. So they so they're treating this pretty slowly. The, cor the coronavirus. I, I think measures measures being taken a as, as well because they obviously wanted to, spread, wanted to spread. They know they have coming coming to their doors. The thing is, the thing is, is that. With the with the coronavirus, it, move it, move it. There are going to be more cases to come, cases to come here in Australia. There's more cases, more cases to come. UK, UK. I think it's trying to mitigate as, mitigate as best you can. The athletes, the athletes, the media, and who and who who might go to Tokyo. If the Olympics, if the Olympics were on today, no hes no hesitation. Japan, Japan. Uh, I, I think safe enough, safe enough. Take some personal response, no responsibility. Hard like. If it in say ten weeks time, it's like it is in China right now. Mm. No way known would you go, and no way known would the Olympics be held. Absolutely. Well, so you're saying there can be no plan B or C. It's either Japan as scheduled mm -hmm. or it's not on. Yeah, absolutely. Now, how you host the Olympics can certainly change. For instance, if they decide, look, we're going to have the Olympics go ahead, but we're going to close the stadiums, there's going to be no spectators, we're going to encourage tourists not to come, because you've got to remember that the Olympics is such a big television event. Mm. You've got the NBC network in the US paying $6 billion to broadcast the games. The Seven Network pays something significant, NHK in Japan. So if they can still have the broadcast, the IOC can still get its money, athletes can still compete for gold, but I think those large congregations where you have live sites, where you have 50,000 people in a stadium, I think there's every chance that we see athletes compete but you know you're confined to the village do not leave the village but that's the perfect environment for this disease to spread because as we know they get it on like rabbits so then yes. the amount of amount of condoms that are had in yes. the yes. village are um, so if reds in reds in the village these people these people go back to their home there is there is then that is a so then there is then there is an onus on the Olympic, the Olympic team and this is all uh, um, all the things, things that have to be taken into consideration. Every committee, committee is almost response athletes, athletes to go. All right, four, four hundred. Help, ready, ready to go athlete and go and go to Japan. The athlete, the athletes' village to their to their stadium or the pool. Not, not, and that's how it goes. Would it be? Would it be like a tradition? No, no, no way. No. Is it still? Is it still an event? Absolutely, absolutely. yeah. Because the athletes, athletes, they train their whole. Lives. It's, lives. it's all so precise, and nice. And so they such a small, this... such a small window. And it, a gold can be uh, the difference between fifty thousand dollars and no money at all into their coffers. Absolutely. Now, a big story in the AFL world this week has been the West Australian revealing that AFL legend Graham Polly Farmer has been posthumously diagnosed with stage three C. TE. What are going to be the ramifications of this? This is a big issue for the sport about concussions and, and head injuries and the long-term impact on players. And, and we already see players of past years showing signs. Greg Williams, uh, Nicky Winmar, John Barnes and the Barnes and the like. But even the play, players, the, the story, Paddy, Mc, Paddy McCartan not being a footy, a footy anymore, uh, you're effective, you're effectively over to deal that, deal that Daniel Venables, who Eagles, Eagles 2008 mission, will not play this year. Inci incident of relating to relating to round nine, it, it is really concerning. I think there will be significant changes to the game. Some say well, we can't take away the fabric. Well, of they're the game. talking about removing. Mark Williams was saying get rid of the bump yep. when the player doesn't know it's coming. Make, but that is just such a. 
integral part of the sport. I it mean, is traditionally. Are we sanitising it to such a point? It is a contact sport. It is. It, it is a contact sport, but accidents will always happen and there will always be accidental concussions. However, if you can mitigate against a concussion by removing the bump... I love footy. I love the rough and toughness of it. However, if it means that these players ultimately live fulfilling lives into their 80s or 90s by getting rid of the bump, then surely it's a no-brainer. I don't want to change the fabric of football. But but is the AFL worried about a class action lawsuit? And we've seen in the NFL uh, what's happened there. Do, do they fear that this is... Uh, and would they be able to prove it in a court of law? Because there are brain surgeons who say the causality is not clear here. Well, you can't, you can't prove CTE uh, until after death. That's why uh, Graham Polly Farmer. So you can't prove anything in this case scientifically until later on. Look, it is a concern for the AFL. They don't want their players to suffer. No one wants to see the players suffer. But they have to get the balance right between what is a, an incredible game and has a, a great following with the safety and health well, and well-being of its players. I think the game will change. I think the physicality of it will be less. Does that make it a worse game? game? I don't think so. It's a discussion I think we're going to have a lot more of in the coming years. Shane McInnes, thank you for joining us.